Hey YouTube, Island Homesteader here. Well, I told you once before that I showed you this pig cooker and told you that one of these days I'd show you something when I cooked on it. So here's the first time I'm opening it for this year and uh, our church is having our big Easter dinner tomorrow and I've got four 20 pound turkeys to cook. So I'm gonna just make this quick. I'm just gonna show you just some highlights of uh, what goes on during the cooking like I said here's the first time this is this is a big oil drum converted pig cooker it's charcoal uh, charcoal is the only thing I like to cook on and it's just a standard cooker and like I said it's the first time I've opened it this year so a little bit of rust on the grates we'll just get a brush real quick and brush those off I've already cleaned the turkeys I'm not going to show you that process but uh, let me get some stuff set up and uh, we'll get this cook going uh, okay, real quick, here's my cooking box. Um, every serious barbecue cook needs a cooking box. It's just a big tote with uh, all the odds and ends that you need in it. Knife set and aluminum foil, lighters. Here's my grill brush. You know, none of those flimsy little grill brushes for this thing. Um, grilling spray Ooh, about out hopefully that's enough uh, aluminum foil ziploc bags to put leftovers in because when you're doing a cook you always have leftovers and people are are wanting them Clorox disinfecting wipes baby wipes to wipe your hands off with just all the all the essentials so that was a quick look thermometer so you know when your stuff's done all right on to it okay so like I said I only cook on charcoal and I never use lighter fluid to start my charcoal or never put any lighter fluid in the grill in the cooker you don't want any chance of having any residue or anything in there so here's my setup for starting my charcoal that's just one of those charcoal chimneys if you cook on a lot of charcoal and you don't have a chimney you need to get one to light it a couple of sheets of newspaper balled up in the bottom you fill that thing up with charcoal light the newspaper and you're good to go um, I like to put mine up a little bit so it gets some airflow underneath and I use these hotel pans I set them up on bricks to get them off the concrete so that they can cool off underneath get some airflow under so that's how I light my charcoal so I'm gonna go ahead and get a batch lit and going while I get the grill cleaned off anybody that does much grilling um, has to have charcoal around I usually try to keep a few bags sitting around all the time uh, that's a double pack of 14 pound bags there's a double pack of 14 there's a double pack of 14 there's a couple of 23 pound but three 23 pound bags and then a couple of partial bags up there that's some stuff that I had left there this is last year's charcoal so hopefully it's still okay just stuff I've had left over from uh, previous cooks that I did last year and I'm fairly picky about my charcoal I uh, typically only use Kingsford that's my uh, preferred as you can see all the Kingsford bags stacked up sitting around and never match light always the kind you gotta light and uh, Kingsford Kingsford's my choice and I'm not getting paid anything by Kingsford to say that this is just my opinion just want to make sure everybody understands that Kingsford in no way gives me any kind of money for using their charcoal that's just my personal choice and the kind that uh, that I've always had the best luck with it's consistent um, of what we can get around here I'm sure someone else is going to say there's a better charcoal but out of what I can get right here on the island Kingsford is a choice for me so at the bottom of the chart at the chimney just a couple of uh, wads of newspaper a couple of sheets of newspaper wadded up and then you're gonna fill this chimney up with charcoal fill it up with charcoal and light the newspaper unless you gotta light it in several different places here on the windy side that's it you just let that newspaper burn and it uh, 
it'll get that charcoal going in there. All right, the grill's been brushed, cleaned up pretty good, and sprayed with a lot of Pam. This is the first cook of the year, so it's been sitting all winter with nothing in there. So I sprayed it really, really good with Pam cooking spray. I typically clean my cooker after every cook. Some people don't. Um, they like to leave all the grease and stuff in there to season the cooker. I just don't like that. I've borrowed other people's cookers. I've used other people's cookers and open them up after they've set for a couple of weeks and there's mold and it's just nasty in there. And uh, But that's the way a lot of people do it. But I don't. I clean mine every time. Um, I will oil my grates down and leave that setting in there, but that's about it. So anyway, here we go. Um, first cook of the year, like I said. So the grill's all cleaned off, ready to go. Charcoal's getting started over there. Now that's that's the smoke now from the charcoal and not from the paper. All the paper's burned up. So it gets hot down at the bottom and all that charcoal starts lighting and then the chimney effect um, pulls all that heat up and the charcoal heats up you know and lights its way up the chimney and all I used was two sheets of newspaper crumpled up in there like I said no lighter fluid um, no nothing else so and what I'm gonna do is I got the turkeys upstairs I'm gonna go up and get them and get them down here on the grill while that charcoal gets ready you don't put it in there until the charcoal's nice and white um, it won't even be smoking anymore it'll it'll burn all that off and uh, I'm gonna cook the turkeys over on one side of the grill and keep all the heat over on the other side so it's going to be kind of an indirect I mean it's still going to be you know it's going to be 250 degrees or so in here is what I'm shooting for 225 to 250 it'll probably take me five hours to cook them it's four 20 pound turkey so it's going to take a few hours but I'm going to try to keep the heat not underneath of the bird since I don't I'm not going to have to fill up my whole grate today I'll be able to keep the heat off to one side and the turkeys over on the other side and uh, I'll be adding some stuff to make some extra smoke and uh, I'll show you that when the time comes so here's the turkeys. Um, they've been cleaned. Like I said, I'm not going to show you that. It's typical cleaning. Just make sure there's nothing nasty on the inside. Um, I do do a little bit different. I uh, I trim out the back some. I cut that that butt section off those that where the feathers, you know, that butt section, and I trim a lot of the front, the skin off of the front, um, so that the smoke can get up inside the cavity of the meat. I don't tie it up. I'll let the legs just flop out. Uh, that way the cavity stays open and uh, the smoke can penetrate inside the bird as well as outside. The only thing I've done is I cleaned them really well and I've given them a really light rub of olive oil and sprinkled um, some of my own um, rub on them. And that's it. So I'm going to carry these down to the grill and uh, get ready to get them on there. Okay, here's the turkeys on the grill. If they look a little funny to you, that's because I always cook them breast side down. Turkeys, whole chickens, any of that, I always cook breast down. Uh, I just think it makes a juicier bird. All the juices, you know, will run down through the breast as it's cooking and uh, keep that breast nice and juicy. So personal preference, you may not agree, but that's the way I've always done mine. So turkeys are on the grill and see, it only takes up about half of that grill so all the heat will be down here down in here at the bottom and the charcoal's just about ready you can see how much it's it's gone down from being full and I don't know if you can see the heat waves on the camera or not but there's a lot of heat coming out of there if we look down in it's almost orange and white up to the very top but not the very top as yet so to finish off the charcoal here's what I do Okay, that's what the second pan's for. When it's just about finished, I take it and dump it in this other pan and uh, let it sit there in a pile for just a few minutes. Now the really hot, char hot charcoal's on the top. That was on the bottom of the chimney. And uh, the stuff on the top's down at the bottom, and that's not going to take but just a couple minutes, and that'll be ready to use. Okay, a couple more tools of the trade. A flat shovel and a hoe. Um, the shovel's used to move the charcoal from there to in the doors on the cooker. And you can see the top's closed now, and it's going to stay closed for a while. The thermometer inside is uh, obviously way less than 100. Whatever the room or the ambient temperature is out here is all that is. So 
the charcoal in the pan is ready to go. So I'm going to get some charcoal in this cooker and get these things cooking. It's 4 o'clock, so uh, these things are going to finish in the dark, but maybe the spotlight's out here. There'll be enough light. I can still show you some stuff. All right, let me get this charcoal on here and get these birds cooking. All right, first load of charcoal, 200 degrees. It'll usually get a little warmer than that with a, uh, a load, but the grill's cold. There's 80 pounds of cold turkey in there, so all of that's absorbing BTU. So, but that's good. I can I can live with that for a while. So I'll let it just warm up. I'm not going to put any smoke to it yet. Uh, I'll let everything warm up, and then with the next load of charcoal, I'll uh, I'll add some stuff to make it smoke, and I'll show you how that goes then. So as you can see, um, now we're making smoke. Uh, it's probably, I'm not sure what time it is, it's probably an hour and a half or so into the cook and um, I used the first batch of charcoal just to heat everything up. It held it at 200 for a while. I put a second batch in, it went to about 240 and then um, I put my smoke in there and um, I smoke with pellets uh, because there's nothing over top of the charcoal, there's no grease dripping on the charcoal to make smoke. Uh, if you were cooking a pig or cooking a bunch of shoulders, you would have the coals under the meat. Once the meat warmed up and started to drip, then um, the grease would drip and it would make plenty of smoke on its own. But since this doesn't, um, I have to add smoke and make smoke in there. So I smoke with pellets. They're a hardwood pellet um, made with uh, hardwood sawdust, primarily hickory, maple, and cherry. It's just like pellets you would use in a pellet wood stove, a pellet stove. Um, but these are made a lot more for, for cooking with, for smoking especially, because it's got a lot of cherry, a lot of maple, and hickory is the primary ingredients. So that's what makes the smoke. And to get the smoke in there, I use one of two different things. One of them is just this quart paint can that I bought a long time ago drill just three small holes in it and uh, you put the pellets you put the pellets in there you don't have to fill it up just a good handful and you would set it on top of the pile of coals and then once the pellets get hot in there they, they start to smoke they don't burn because there's not much air but just those two those three little holes and uh, so they just smolder and smoke and then the other way I do it and you can't see it. Nah, you can't see it. It's a cast iron box. They make, um, there it is. It's a cast iron box with slots in the top. And uh, do the same thing. Handful of pellets, set it right on top of the coals just like you see there. It gets hot, um, but there's not enough air for it to really catch on fire. So they just smolder and smoke. And it makes a lot of smoke. I mean, a handful of pellets. And you can see you can see the smoke coming out of the out of the cooker now so I'll do that for uh, a couple of hours just to make sure there's a good amount of smoke on the birds and uh, we'll uh, just cook them till they're done all right they've been cooking a little over two hours now so hopefully we're halfway through so I'm going to open this for the first time and uh, take a look at them Stick a thermometer in them and just um, kind of get an idea where I'm at. So here we go. All right. So there they are after two hours of cooking. You can see where we I trim that, that skin and that fat off. See where that brown gets up actually into the meat of the breast. They've got a beautiful color. All of them. So that's what they look like. So let me uh, let me get a thermometer in them, and uh, the skin's pretty getting pretty crunchy on that one too. So they got to be cooking pretty good. Let me get a thermometer in them and uh, figure out where they're at. All right, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's right about a hundred. That's in the breast, and 165 is what we're looking for. So we're probably halfway there. All right, let me get this. Uh, lid closed and get some more charcoals in here. 
so it had dropped down to about 210 and uh, just added the 